The Adam Project was directed by Sean Levy and stars Ryan Reynolds, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner, Zoe Saldana, Catherine Keener, and Walker Scobell. And in this movie, we follow a young kid named Adam, played by Scobell, who's having a tough time in life. He's been through a lot of stuff recently, and things are very strained with his mom, played by Garner. However, when he encounters his adult self, played by Reynolds, who seems to have come back in time to do something, and they have to work together and figure out how they can stop a threat from the future that could destroy the space-time continuum if they succeed. The problem with doing a review after like a few days is that you kind of forget how to do it because I sat down to do this right now and I swear to god I have stuttered five different times so this is like the sixth take of me saying this but essentially speaking you're following all of these different characters but also it explores certain themes like them essentially in the future is like how the decisions they're making today will impact their character as the years go by and that is a big thing that comes up. Sean Levy's work is some that I've been really a big fan of. I've really liked Stranger Things. I thought it was very entertaining and I'm looking forward to the new season coming out soon. I also really liked Free Guy, the movie that he made last year. That was a very fun movie. And so going into the Adam project, I had some excitement, some hopes and anticipations. And I have to say, for the most part, I was pretty pleased with the Adam project. I think it's a very fun, very entertaining movie that its best points are the ones that are dealt with in terms of its thematic depth. At the end of the day, like I said, this is a story about a man and his younger self. The two of them are interacting and they're both sort of looking back on the things that they've done, what is going to happen in the future and the interactions that happen as a result of it are really really great. In fact, there is action sci-fi stuff in the movie, but I found that to be the least interesting of the th two subplots that are going on in it. Like the invasion stuff is not something I'm super interested in. The stuff that I was more interested in was the dynamic that was building between younger Adam and the older Adam, and I think Walker Scobell and Ryan Reynolds, both of them, are really, really great in the film. They have excellent chemistry and the kind of conversations that they have, they become more and more poignant. And even though it's not something you've not heard before, you've probably heard some of this dialogue a thousand times over, it's done quite nicely. It, it works for the movie that they're trying to make and the story they're telling. This especially comes in handy when it comes to the parental angle because both his mom and dad have strained relationships with him. Actually, he has it with them. And essentially, you're looking back on what they could have done differently, what he's been doing with them, and trying to make rectifications along the way. There's a lovely moment, which I'm not going to go too much into, involving Jennifer Garner talking to the older version of her son. She doesn't know it's him, but it's a really great conversation. And I won't lie to you, it, it sort of put a lump in my throat. And there's a couple of uh, moments like that. There's another one much, much later in the film, which I'm not going to talk about, but it's it's very well handled stuff. And I think Levy did those scenes really, really well. And that's a lot of the movie. So I was very glad that it managed to hit those emotional beats as well as it did. The action is fun. Whenever it did go into those chase sequences or something like a shoot 'em up sequence, those were really well done and they were very entertaining. Yeah, they're a lot like Free Guys sequences, which makes sense because, you know, same director. And you can definitely tell those influences are on this. There's also a soundtrack influence on this that I found interesting. I started to notice that with Sean Levy stuff, there's always one thing that stays in common. There'll always be this one song that is the crux of things. So in Stranger Things, it was Should I Stay or Should I Go? In Free Guy, it was Fantasy. And in this one, it's Give Me Some Lovin'. I just thought it's interesting, like each one of them has a core song that they're going back to. And all of them pertain to something that is you know, the main theme of the movie. So you can probably guess where I'm going with Gave Me Some Lovin', especially since I talked about the emotional beats that it hits. All of the cast, honestly, is great. I thought Mark Ruffalo was really, really great. I thought Jennifer Garner was really good. I thought Zoe Saldana was great. I thought Catherine Keener was fun. Although it it's definitely, you know, your cliched, I am evil and I want to do evil stuff for profits kind of villain. And again, it's so it's very similar to stuff that you may have seen recently. And like I said, I go back to Free Guy because Taika Waititi's villain and that has some similarities to this one in how things are being handled. And I don't know, there's a lot of meta jokes made in here as well. What I'm trying to say here is that if you enjoyed Free Guy, you're probably going to enjoy this movie. <laughs> because there's a lot of different parallels that you can make between the two of them. It's not a perfect film by any means. It's definitely got a lot of different things that could have been a lot better. Especially some character depth. There were a couple of things that just felt very underdeveloped. In particular, Jennifer Garner's character. I, I really don't think you get enough with 
his mom, even though they build that up as something that is very, very important to everything that has happened in Adam's life since. But you don't really get too much of that. Like I said, it's a very shallow villain arc that you get with this. It's very simple to the point. There's also a lot of exposition in this movie, which really surprised me. Like there's a lot of times where characters just tell you stuff and it's just them going on for about a minute or so just telling you some things or they'll insert random lines here or there while some other conversation is happening to give you some context like early on in the film there's a moment a character is like don't you know about the things that he's been through this bad tragedy happened recently and i was like oh, okay did that have to be said or are you just saying that because you know we're the audience and we're supposed to know that something has happened but yeah, there's different things like that in the film that could have been a lot better. Overall though, I still think it's a fun movie. It's a very simple film, it's to the point, it's got some interesting concepts here and there, and it's got a bunch of really great performances and a very, very genuine heart to it. And like I said, I haven't talked about this, but there is a scene much later on in the movie that definitely, it, it really pulls at your heartstrings. And for that reason, I'm gonna give The Adam Project a 7.5 out of 10. It's going to be on Netflix on March 11th. If you get a chance to check it out, then do so. I know there were some virtual screenings and stuff happening over the last couple of days. So if you had a chance to see it that time, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below. As always, if you like this, please just subscribe, guys. And I'll see you guys at the movies.